we can also solve a system algebraically through a process called elimination. Eliminate means to get rid of, so we're going to get rid of one of those variables so that we can solve for the other. Similar to most things in mathematics, there's again a series of steps that we're going to go through, beginning with step one, where we're going to line each variable up vertically. Now, these two happen to be already aligned. Sometimes you'll have to rearrange them, but we want the x's stacked, the y's stacked, and the constant term stacked. The order in which they go doesn't really matter. In order to solve for one of these variables, I need to eliminate the other by adding or subtracting those two equations together. So I'm going to take a look at what I have here. And because I have the same coefficient on the fours, if I subtract those two, that will give me zero x, leaving me with a y variable that I can solve for. So we're going to subtract those two equations. And when I do that, I'm going to eliminate the x variable. Zero x, that's gone. 9 minus 3 gives me 6y, and make sure you watch your signs here. It's negative 7 minus negative 13. Minus a negative is like a positive, so it's negative 7 plus 13 gives us 6. And then I'm going to divide out that 6 to isolate y, and I'm going to do the same thing over here to keep it balanced, which means I have a y coordinate of 1. Now once I have y, I need to find x. So I'm going to substitute into one of those equations, it doesn't matter which one, and we're going to get the value of x. I happen to choose the first equation. So we have 4x plus 9. We're going to substitute in this 1 in the place of y. So I've got 9 times 1 equals negative 7. And then this is my variable I'm solving for. So I'm going to isolate that variable and I end up with an x coordinate of negative 4. So remember you want to always write your solution as an ordered pair. So we need the round brackets, our x coordinate, comma, and our y coordinate. And then always verify. If it doesn't specifically ask you to, you don't have to write it all out, but I would do this mentally. So x is negative 4. If I put a negative 4 back here, this term has a value of negative 16. If I put the 1 in for the y, this term has a value of 9. Negative 16 plus 9 is negative 7. Negative 16 plus 3 is negative 13. So just quickly make sure on both equations the left side equals the right side. Step 1, make sure that we have the terms aligned vertically. So the a's are stacked on top of each other, the b's are stacked on top of each other, the constant terms are stacked on top of each other. Now we're going to take a look at the coefficients on the variables and see which variable we can easily eliminate. So I can see that I have a negative 3 and a positive 3. I know that if I start with negative 3 and I add positive 3 to it, that will bring, bring my b's to 0. So we're going to add those two equations together to eliminate the variable b. Make sure that we add every term. So 4a plus 2a is 6a. Negative 3 plus 3 is 0 b, so that's gone. Negative 10 plus 22 is 12. And then to get a isolated, I'm going to divide 6 out, and a has a value of 2. See, look how lickety split that is. You're going to like this more than graphing. Once we have the first variable in our coordinate point, then we're going to solve for the second one. So we're going to choose one of those equations, substitute in the value of a, and then solve for b. And I happen to go with the first one again. I liked negative 10 better than 22, but it doesn't matter. So so we're going to substitute in a 2 for a, so we have 8 minus 3b equals negative 10, and then we're going to isolate b, and then when you go to write it as an ordered pair, if you're not given an x and a y, list the terms alphabetically. So a comes before b in the alphabet, and then quickly verify. a has a value of positive 2, so when I substitute it back in, this term, 4 times 2 is 8 b has a value of 6. When I substitute it back in, negative 3 times 6 is negative 18. 8 minus 18 is negative 10. And when I substitute it into the second one, this term has a value of 4 plus 18, which is going to give me 22. The left side equals the right side. When given two equations that are not initially stacked, we're going to first line up the variables. So I can see in the first one we have an x and a y term equals a constant term. I've got an x, I want to move the y over so that both y's are on the left of the equal sign, and then the constant term is on the other side. And the order in which you line them up doesn't matter, but we want the same terms in the same place, and then we're going to line them up vertically. Make sure everything you do algebraically is correct. So when I subtract 2y from this side, I subtract 2y from this side, making this a minus 2y. And then we're going to take a look at our coefficients, and we're going to say, okay, I can see that I have a 2 and a negative 
of two on my y variable, do I need to add or subtract those to bring my y term to zero? And we know two plus negative two will give us zero. So I'm going to add those two equations together. And notice I circle my sign just so it's really clear what we're doing. And then we're going to go ahead and add every term. And then to solve for y, I chose to substitute into the second equation just because I didn't want to deal with that 19. So I substituted in 5 times 3 is 15, and then isolate y, and we get a y value of 5. Remember to write it as an ordered pair and then verify. So if x is 3, that means this term has a value of 9. If y is 5, this term has a value of 10. 9 plus 10 is 19, so that one is good, left equals right. And then again, if x is 3, this term is equal to 15. So if I put a 5 in for y, I've got 10 plus 5, 15 equals 15, I know I have the right point. In my next one, I can see that I've got an x on the left and a y on the right. Now I've got a y on the left and an x on the right. So I'm going to rearrange one of them and then stack them vertically so that I can eliminate one of those variables. And again, make sure everything you do is algebraically correct. So I've now got my x's stacked on the left of the equal sign, and then on the right side we've got our constant terms and then our y terms. So if I take a look at the coefficients on the variable, I have a negative 2 and a negative 5. I also have a 3x and a 4x. I'm not going to be able to just add or subtract to get rid of one of them. So we're going to have to multiply every term in this equation by a certain number. We're going to have to multiply every term in this equation by a certain number so that we can eliminate it. Similar to finding the lowest common denominator in fractions. So decide which variable you want to eliminate, and it doesn't matter. I decided to eliminate x, and so I can see that if I have 3x and 4x, the lowest common multiple of 3 and 4 is 12. So I want to get 12x and 12x. I can do that if I multiply by 4, and I have to multiply every term by 4 in this equation so that I'm not changing the original value. It's still going to be equivalent. And I can see that by multiplying this term by 3, I can also get it to 12x. And again, in order to keep the equivalent equation, I need to multiply every term in that equation by the same value. Now I have equivalent equations, and I have the same coefficient on both of the x's. So I can see that by subtracting those equations, I can eliminate the x, giving me just 0 on the left, and then I can subtract the right and solve for y. Once I got the value of y, choose one of the original equations to substitute into. I happen to choose this one. So I put in a 4 for y. 2 minus 8 is negative 6 divided by 3 is negative 2. So you don't have to write down all those little steps that I'm writing down continuously. You can see how we're starting to speed this up. I did it initially just so you can see where those values are coming from, but we would expect you to do some of this a little bit more efficiently. As an ordered pair, make sure that you then verify. I'm going to have negative 6 equals 2 minus 8. So 2 minus 8 is negative 6. Those sides are balanced. And then 5 times 4 is 20. If I put in a negative 2 here, negative 4 times negative 2 is positive 8. 12 plus 8 also has 20. The left and right are balanced. If you see something like this, the first thing I would probably do is try to eliminate the denominators. So we know the denominator on the 2 and the 0 are 1. In this first equation, my lowest common denominator is 12, and here my lowest common denominator is 6. So I'm first going to write every term with those common denominators for each equation, and then try to eliminate the denominator. Because we only want one equal sign in an equation, notice how I'm using an arrow just to show that we're moving from here to here. So once we have the lowest common denominator, I'm going to say, okay, 3, what am I going to do with that 3 to get to 12? And because I multiplied by 4, I need to multiply by 4 to keep the numerator equivalent. So I have 4x here. I'm going to say, what did I do with 4 to get to 12? And we multiplied that by 3, so I'm going to multiply the y by 3, giving us 3y. And then we're going to say, what did we do with 1 to get 12? We multiplied by 12, so we're going to do the same thing to the numerator to keep a balance. And the reason this works, again, remember, is because 12 divided by 12 is 1, so I'm essentially multiplying by 1, which isn't changing the value. Now, every term I'm dividing by 12, so I'm going to multiply everything by 12. That's going to eliminate the denominator, leaving me just with the numerators, and then I'm going to do the same thing with my second equation. 
So you may notice once the denominators are balanced, we're essentially just dropping them. If I take six and times it by one sixth, it's canceling out, leaving me just with those numerators. So that's how we get the second one. Now I could either add these two equations together and eliminate Y, or I can subtract those two equations together and eliminate X. You can choose which one you want to do. Either will work. Just be really clear on which operation that you're using. I chose to subtract to eliminate x. And again, I didn't write down all my steps. This is okay for showing the work. Show enough that we can follow what you're doing. And then I chose to substitute back into this equation to get my x value once I had the y. You could go into the original ones, but you're dealing with fractions. So I just took one of our equivalent equations and that will also work. Now, the only thing is if you incorrectly rearrange this, you're now going to get the incorrect value here. So it's really important to always verify. If I know that x is 3 and I put a 3 back, 3 divided by 3 has a value of 1. If I put a 4 in the place of a y, 4 divided by 4 has a value of 1. 1 plus 1 is 2, so that one balances. And then again, if x is 3, 6 divided by 3, this is 2. 4 divided by 2 is 2. 2 minus 2 is 0. That is also balanced. And finally, we're going to conclude with a question that looks familiar to you by now. The first thing we need to do is come up with our two equations. Start by looking for totals because there isn't a rate given in this question. Put your totals on one side and see if you can build the equations that will then create your system. Choosing variables that represent what we're talking about, this is a handwritten S for student, just so it doesn't accidentally get confused with a five. All right, so I can see that I've got my two equations. The easiest way to solve this is by elimination. If it says solve it algebraically, you have to do either elimination or substitution, but I'm gonna take a look at the coefficients. And even though I don't have the same number, if I multiply this whole equation by two, I can get a six A, which will then eliminate when I subtract. Or if I multiply this entire equation by four, I'll get eight S, which I can then also eliminate when I subtract. You're gonna get the same answer however you choose to do it. I'm gonna get you to pause the video and see if you can continue this question and get to the solution. I kind of hope you did it a different way, just so we can see that multiple ways will get us to the same answer. It's really important that at the end of a word problem, you do answer what's being asked. This is the only time you don't specifically have to write a coordinate point because we're asked what the price for each of the tickets is. So be really clear on what your final answer is, including appropriate units. And always verify. That's the beauty of algebra is you will know right away if your answer is correct or not. When you substitute back in, does the left side equal the right side? Check. Always.